I am Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Jack Lewis of Modus Test. We're going to talk today about problems in testing AI chips. Jack, as these chips get larger and we have more compute elements, uh, we have more memory that's going on to these chips, it gets harder to test them, right? What sort of problems are you running into? Well, large AI chips require very high performance sockets for final test and system level test. This brings about new challenges in maintaining, characterizing these kind of interconnects that are required for these high power, high performance products. And you've got a lot more elements to test too, right? And they all have to be perfectly tested versus uh, in the past when you, you had a lot fewer of them, you have less room between them. What sort of problems does that cause? Well, with a much higher pin counts on the package, the probability of having a good interconnect goes down dramatically as the package sizes increase. And then on the performance side, the CRES specifications and also the shielding specifications are much higher now. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Jack, what are we looking at? Okay, so traditionally, when we're gonna test a AI package or any kind of large semiconductor package, we have a test housing to interface the package to the test equipment. So this would traditionally be a test socket housing with spring pin contacts installed to provide compliance for the package warpage and electrically interconnect the power of the grounds and IOs from the tester to the device under test. So they're typically broken up into VSS or ground pins and IO and power pins. With the new advanced, pack, advanced uh, AI processors, the performance requirement at system level test requires these packages to be as close to soldered down electrically as possible. Of course, that's not possible. So we have to blind mate electrically interconnect these packages to the tester temporarily to finish the test. And to do that, at this point now, we've added a coaxial shield. A lot of the vendors have coaxial shields within the sockets to help with the signal performance or the AC performance of the socket and also to provide a crosstalk shield from so you don't interfere from one signal pin to another. So what kind of tests have you been using and where do you go next? Okay, traditionally, we provided contact resistance test, which is measuring the resistance at the top of the, the top of the spring pin and the bottom of the spring pin, plus the resistance in the body of the pin to check the performance of the pin to make sure that it's electrically and DC parametrically performing like we need it. Now with the addition of the coaxial shield test, we also need to make sure that this shield is performing, that there's good contact between the ground pin and the shield. Otherwise, the shield performance is degraded. And you're dealing with thousands of elements here, right? I mean, it's not, not just six or eight that you've got up here. It's a big chip. Yes, uh, we're seeing sockets, uh, test sockets, array sizes at 22,000 pins or more at this point already. So these devices are... 150 millimeter square with over 22,000 contact points and the roadmap is up to 80,000 right now. Wow. How do you make sure that you make contact on all those different elements? We have a test system that allows us to test each individual pin independently, the grounds, the powers and the signals 100% with no gaining. So we have actual million level micro ohm level CRES measurements of each pin in the socket before it goes into the test cell or after it's coming out of the test cell for maintenance activities because at the cost of these and the array size you have to be able to maintain these sockets to make it cost effective to use them. And can you ensure that you make contact on every single one of these as well? Yes, our, our test system allows us to individually identify any pin that has a problem whether the spring force or contact resistance, whatever is the root cause, identify the pin so that it can go for maintenance and be repaired and brought back to a known good condition, or we call it known good socket. And those, those springs act as almost shock absorbers, right? Between you get warpage that they can expand or contract depending upon what, what you need for that. That's correct. So the, the spring pins have a, a working travel distance that allows you to comply to the package warpage, bulk coplanarity, 
and it needs to maintain a good C-res throughout that working travel range. So what can go wrong here? Okay, traditionally, we've really focused in the industry on the contact resistance of the pen and the working travel. A, a new issue with these advanced package sockets is because we need to have an additional contact point within the housing from the ground pin to the coaxial shields, this interconnect right here, it can be achieved in many ways mechanically. They each have their pros and cons, but the life cycle of this contact and how low the resistance stays affects how well the shield works. And so we're able to measure this as well to make sure that each one of these pins, and you need a high percentage of the pins within the array, maybe not 100%, but a very high percentage of them need to be making good contact relatively close to the closest signal pins that may be emitting signal or need to be shielded. So distance is also important between these and that all of these pins are making good low resistance contact. So we're essentially measuring a short, but how good is the short? If it's not good enough, the performance, the AC performance characteristics will degrade. So this is an issue that needs to be maintained and checked if you want to have sockets that will yield for the long term through your maintenance cycle. Basically what you're measuring here is the aging of these different springs, right? And how they go together. How do you know, I mean, are they all at this, exactly the same age and they, they behave similarly or is it going to be individual pins to behave differently? Individual pins will behave differently depending on the amount of current flowing through the pin, depending on uh, you know, the mechanical factors about how the pin has been biased at times, you, there's numerous issues that can come about from mechanical damage, form material getting into the holes, uh, ball, ball material, you know, leakage issues. All of these things can impact how the socket performs and, and our system is designed to detect and, and help you maintain these. So the pins will be a different age depending on when they've been replaced to bring the overall socket to the exact required specification that you know is gonna yield in the test cell. And so the, the new aspect of this is, is also maintaining that shield performance and, and being able to measure it and, and take corrective actions. Is the current that goes through each one of these pins exactly the same, or is it very dependent upon uh, whatever the chip is doing? So you may have some things that are at older nodes, some at the, the same nodes, some are being used more heavily than others for certain functions. Yeah, so there, there are different pitches as far as, you know, pitch from ball to ball, pin diameters. Some sockets will have heavier power and ground pins, smaller I.O. pins just for signal integrity, AC performance characteristics. So it, it's, it's actually there can be multiple types of pins with multiple different pitches uh, in these packages. And they're not just standard array ball anywhere. Um, it's infinite, infinite array sizes and pitches within within a, even within a single socket for a particular chip. And that also affects how long these things last too, right? It can. So obviously the power delivery inside and outside of the into and out of the chip, uh, you know, there's current carrying capacity in the chip, uh, in the pin. And then as they interface with the balls, you can have things like uh, diffusion that happens under current and temperature, which, you know, it may, it may, diffuse the ball material onto the plating of the pin and degrade the contact resistance. And those are the kinds of things that we're looking to measure so that we can replace the pins as needed to keep the performance uh, where it needs to be. And also the more power that runs through these devices, the more stress it creates on certain areas of the chip too, right? So now you have to balance all that across the whatever you're testing. Yes, a big problem with large packages as you get warpage, C-Res is strongly correlated to planarity or force. So if you have warpage in a socket, the the force at the in in the in the cavity will be less. So pins that have less C res will not conduct as much and pins that have good C res will conduct more. So you can actually have hot spots where power will drain out through it'll go more to the, the pins that have low C res and less to the high C res pins. This causes localized self heating which can damage the plating and actually degrade the springs, many different aspects of that that can cause you problems uh, and also localized heating in the, in the package because the, the current is trying to get out through the, the low resistance pass. So you need the C-Res to be as consistent as possible across the distributed grounds and powers throughout the package as possible to prevent these types of things. And that'll manifest as 
uh, melted melted bowls, stuck packages and sockets. You know, it can be catastrophic. In the past, when you had stress, a lot of the uh, uh, stress fell upon the balls on the outside edge. Is that still the case when the, with these large ships, or is it can it happen anywhere now? It can happen anywhere because the package may be warped this way. It can be warped this way. And depending on that, the pressure, is it, the force changes across the package. And this is a big topic that uh, we have uh, high precision actuators to actually check what the coplanar area is. And by measuring the sea res, we know what the uh, what's happening in the pressure of the socket, right, across the array. And just because it's warped does not mean it's bad, right? It could just mean it's warped and that you have to deal with it and you just have to make sure it works. There's always a some, some amount of warpage. You have to be able to comply with it, both at test and then in the end application when it reflows to the board, right? So there's two places. Unfortunately, in reflow, you're not actually applying downward pressure. You're allowing the balls to reflow to the board. At test, we actually have to compress this thing. There could be 20,000 pins at 20 grams. So you've got 400 kg of force that you need to apply to this. That pack, that force you have to put on that package is, is causing stress in the package at test. You don't want to cause damage in the package while you're testing it, right? That's obviously non-value added. And utilization of all these different elements has changed fairly significantly. It used to be fairly uniform of, oh, we, we're going to use every compute element pretty similarly on this. The problem now is as we get into AI, you've got gradients. Uh, you've got uh, some areas are hotter than others, and the stress will, in one area will be higher than it will be in another. How, does, how do you test for that? We can't really test for that in the, the, the what they're going to see in the end application. What we would see would be the artifacts of what happened. So the forensics of it, when you're bringing that socket back for maintenance, we'll see the signatures, the telltale signs of what's happening. So we may see in the corners, for example, like you mentioned, much higher C-res, or we may see damage or loss of spring force. It all will manifest, it all affects the C-res performance. And when we measure that, we spatially look at it and we know where the problem is by that. Is there any uh, number that you can uh, say, okay, this is how long these pins are supposed to last, or is it very dependent upon what you're using and vendor to vendor, actually? So traditionally, the, the pin manufacturers, the socket manufacturers will give some specification of how many cycles uh, a pin should last, how many actuations or insertion count of total devices. And so that could range from 2,000 to a million. So there's it's based on the specification for the manufacturer. Uh, one issue is is that beyond that that insertion count that the the pin's supposed to last is right now there is no real specification for how long this contact has to make. So we've always focused at the contact resistance. We've not really focused at the ground contact to the shield resistance, which is very important on these new products. And unfortunately, it's not really being specified at this time. Nobody necessarily at this point knows how long it's going to last and and how often what the maintenance so that's why we're here to make the measurements so we can figure out what that recipe is long term and then it's a way to gauge the performance and the cost of ownership for this socket overall and you really want to get that information as fast as possible too right because now you want to say okay if we're running into a problem in, in manufacturing and test we need to address this so that we don't have this problem going into future devices absolutely correct so once you've already purchased you know, many, it takes hundreds of these sockets for a particular product. They're very expensive. You don't want to find out that they don't last, but maybe 2000 insertions, you would like to find that out before you actually purchase them. So we have ways to do this offline outside of the test cell well before. So we characterize the sockets for how long this junction will last, the, the integrity of it, what the resistance will be over time, not to mention the contact resistance over time as well. So we do life cycle studies offline, so you can do this all this work up front. And moving this out to a bigger picture, that affects the reliability of the chips themselves, right? Yes. So the obviously the spring pins are very important. You know, from a solderability perspective, you got to be focused with you know how hard the pins are pushing, what kind of damage they're doing to the balls. From a compliance perspective, can you handle the, the package compliant, the warpage? So choosing the right socket is very important to make sure that the, the pins, the socket design match what you need from a coplanarity spec for your package as well. If you don't have that right, 
you either lose yield or you potentially have to compress harder than needed to, to get contact. And then now you have things like die cracking or package damage that can happen. So it's a very, very critical piece that has to be in place for every chip that goes out the door because they're all going to go through at least some final test and most likely system level test on these large AI processors. Jack Lewis, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.